everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, public hearing on uh, this resolution directing the uh, uh, Committee on Electoral Reform to conduct an inquiry on uh, the necessary laws, if any, to be enacted for the purpose of the 2022 election. So, uh, in the midst of COVID, uh, we are assuming there will be uh, changes and uh, additional budgets required. So, uh, we have not so we have the first of uh, my um, good colleagues in the chamber, uh, Senator Francis Tolentino and Senator Cynthia A. Villar. So, uh, considering that the public hearing was only in February 18 and we only suspended such a quorum was not necessary, but I'm grateful for the participation of uh, my fellow senators. Now, may I call on attorney uh, Dana Alberto to um, acknowledge the presence and recognize our various resource persons from the different uh, government agencies, as well as the stakeholders and NGOs in our electoral process. Attorney Good Dana, please. Yes. Good morning. The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation would like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests, namely from the Commission on Elections, Attorney Glynis Tomondong and Attorney Albert Rodriguez. From DFA, Ms. Jamila S. San Juan. From DOH, Dr. Jehan Maher Mohammed Amin El Abdel Kawi and Dr. Amira Gachalian. From CAC, Dr. Arwin Serrano, Mr. Yes, Alan, Mr. Alan Tan. Please raise and your then, hand when you're called so that we know who you are. Yes. Um, from DICT, Director Leo Cipriano Urbistondo. Uh, who's that? Pakitaas lang ang kamay. Ayun, thank you. Thanks. From Lente, Attorney Helen Grido. Uh, is uh, is she there? Yeah, I don't see her on the screen. From Ateneo School of Government, Dr. Ronald U. Mendoza. Hi, yes, okay. From from Tech, a technical technical evaluation committee, Engineer Peter Banzon. What what tech is that? I'm sorry. D D O S T S T, ma'am. Ah, I see. Okay. From Philippine Medical Association, Dr. Maria Encarnita Limpin and Dr. Maria Roda Goko. And from the uh, I don't see them on screen. I'm sorry. Dr. Maria Encarnita Limpin. Yes, uh, doctors, can you please put your video on? And the story, Dr. Maria Roda Goko, please turn on your cameras. Uh. Is there anyone from DOH, please? Thank you. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Uh, there are two doctors ma from DOH, Dr. Jehan Maher Muhammad Amin El Abdel Kawi and Dr. Am Almira Gachalian. Who is Dr. Amira? Okay, can you please? Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. And from DepEd, Undersecretary Alain Pasqua. And then, si Alain? Parang wala. Andito, wala ma'am. Uh, your video, please. Oh, there. There's Alain. Yeah. Please please keep your video on. We'll uh, try to go as quickly as possible, but it's very difficult to talk to uh, uh, a screen. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, ma 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 from Democracy Watch, Mr. Paco Pangalangan. Uh, Democracy Watch, please. Hi, uh, sorry, I just joined. Good, good morning, uh, Senator Marcos, and, and to. Senator thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, meron po bang hindi po natawag? Kindly state your institution and your name, please. Uh, hello, good morning, po. Um, Paul Michael Hernandez, UP College of Public Health. Ah, yes, good. Dr. Paul Hernandez. Good morning, po. Uh, nasaan, please? Good morning, ma'am. Okay. City College. Kayo ba yun? Um, Dr. Roda Goko from the Philippine Medical Association. 
Okay, thanks. All right, that's good. Um, we're grateful for your presence. Thank you very much for all those who are here this morning. Um, as you know, we uh, seek to uh, conduct an inquiry um, in uh, aid of legislation so that the necessary laws can be uh, um, can be filed and uh, hopefully passed in uh, the soonest possible time um, in order for the conduct, the orderly conduct of elections in uh, May of 2022. There is no desire to postpone the elections. The uh, president has manifested time and again his desire that elections proceed as uh, stated in the constitution. And uh, with that, we would like to make every effort to COVID proof our elections. We know that many elections throughout the world have been canceled in certain cases postponed, but in many cases also successfully undertaken. So um, um, I think uh, we have a smaller provincial example of that with the conduct of the Palawan election in March, which I am led to believe uh, um, involved upwards of 60% of the voters. And given the difficulty of the terrain, and uh, preparation, I think uh, the COMELEC should be roundly congratulated. Um, however, we also note that in the Palawan election, there was at least a 17% increase in the budget of 22 million in a single province. So we are assuming the same level of financial support. Uh, additional financial support will be needed from um, the uh, budget of um, of. Uh, um the uh, government um i'm also querying um the uh, continued registration i think we're already at uh, almost 60 million that's still short of the 2 million in 29 of the 62 million in 2019 and uh far from the 65 million that we had anticipated 2022 pre-covid so uh, we'll uh, have to discuss that as well and I personally am open to the possibility of online registration for the marginalized and uh, more problematic uh, sectors, at least for registration, although there's a violent reaction to uh, online voting or mail-in voting. Um, lastly, I think we need to deal with the problem of overseas votes. As we know, uh, the uh, turnout has been miserable. Although 1.8 uh, million in 2019 registered, um, just a little over 300,000 actually voted. So that continues to be a miserable uh, setup. And uh, to date, I think we're only at 1.3 million registered for OFWs. The complication of the repatriated over OFWs who are here in the Philippines and those who may be deployed between now and May uh, and the complication of the registry as well as their uh, voting precinct. So if uh, my fellow senators, Senator Tolentino or Senator Villar would like to uh, make some uh, statements uh, previous to our uh, resource persons. Uh, I will just listen, Senator Aimee. <laughs> Senator Talentino, please. I will, I will also prefer to listen, but I would like to be educated more uh, as to the ability of the COMELEC to enable our seafarers to vote. And number two, I would want to be, I would want to have some confirmation because part of the, the title of the resolution is, is about the Bang Zamoro substantial information coming from Comelec, confirm, validate, authenticate whether they can conduct an election this coming May 2022 in the absence of a Bangsamoro Electoral Code. In lamang po, uh, Madam Chair, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Tolentino and Senator Villar. With that, um, we call on the Comelec. I'm aware that uh, you've conducted uh, the Palawan uh, plebiscite and perhaps you can update us on that as well as uh, the task force that's <laughs> undertaken to uh, study the uh, preparations for 2022. Um, is someone from the COMELEC ready to uh, answer both my queries as well as Senator Tolentino's? 
Yes, uh, the uh, Comelec representatives, please. Secretary. Anyone from Comelec, please? Naman taga Comelec dyan? Paano tayo magka-hearing? Uh, Walang Comelec? Director Ito Esther na? Rojas, Director Alarcon. Yes, I thought uh, Director Elnas was around. Sorry. Sorry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Director Pistong will be the one to present. Uh, Director Wu, uh, Director I can't Director Elnas. Ah, kung pwede lang yung video. Director Elnas will be the one to present the uh, result of the plebiscite. Okay, no, we know the result of the plebiscite. We just like to know if there were any uh, takeaways or lessons learned regarding COVID in uh, the in uh, an election. Anjan ba siya? Director Elnas, please. Director Esther, wala yata. Ikaw lang yata yung komelek na narito. Uh, co committee Secretary, wala ba si Director? I'm trying to call her. Or Attorney Rodriguez. Uh, it appears that they're actually here. Uh, well, they've, uh, they've logged in, but where are they? Ma'am, nawawala po si Attorney Albert. Medyo mahina daw po ang signal sa, sa residence nila, ma'am. Director Alarcon is also logged in. But... Mahina. Mukhang mahina rin po ang signal because there's... Anong gagawin natin? Madam, siya, oh. actually... Oh. Sorry. Director Elnas is trying to log in. Uh, okay, Director Elnas we... is trying to log in. Yeah, while we're waiting, why don't we consult the DOH? I think at the end of the day, the DOH and the doctors are going to tell us exactly what to do. So uh, um, I think the India experience was a dismal one, and uh, we don't want to uh, endure that here in the Philippines. Clearly, the earlier notion that you get uh, infections from sick people or from nearby coughing people or infected objects is no longer the truth. And during the India campaigns, it became very, very clear that super spreaders were, in fact, uh, very crowded places that were enclosed. Is that correct from the DOH, please? Or any doctor? Ma'am Director Elnas already logged in, ma'am. Yes, but uh, let's start on the DOH. Can we start with the DOH? After all, you will be the ones uh, dictating terms, essentially. Um, is there anything we can learn from India, for example? Because clearly things have changed. It's airborne. Hence, uh, despite the delay in WHO's recognizing that fact, uh, Many meetings were conducted in India in enclosed, non-ventilated spaces. So uh, would our usual precincts in the school buildings not suffice as a result? Is there someone from the DOH or a doctor, please? Kanina maraming doctor. DOH. Dr. Serrano, um, uh, doctor. Parang ang daming doctor kanina, di ba? DOH, um, Philippine Medical Association, or... Um, yeah, Dr. Abdel Kawi, Dr. Kachalian, Dr. Camacho. Can you just tell us what uh, what health uh, protocols need to be observed um, differently, as it were, from what we used to do before? Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. So this is Dr. Abdel Kawi from the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau. Uh, are you know with the DOH? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar. Uh -uh. Ah, yes. Uh, this is Prevention and Control Bureau of the Philippine Department of Health. Um, I think we were Department able to... Department of what? Department of Health. Oh. 
Okay, okay. Yes. I think we were able to submit our position paper for all the details that we want to suggest in the conduct of our elections. I'm sorry, However, to be secretary and doctor, I am not in receipt, and I doubt if the senators are either. Uh, okay, so just give uh, us points very briefly. Uh, yes, so um, I can share it here in the screen. So, um, so this is our suggestion. However, the principles are the same uh, to maintain the minimum public health standards so that we can prevent the transmission of... Pwede ba ikwento na lang po? Kasi wala tayong time sabihin yung ating presentation. Di naman siya PowerPoint eh. Can you just tell us na lang briefly because I'm not inclined to to stop and read all of that. Yes, but the principles stay the same to adhere to the minimum public health standards, which is safe distancing of at least two meters. Uh, if distancing cannot be ensured, uh, the physical barriers so that uh, we can... Barriers considering that it's airborne. Mm. Uh, however, mo, what we also have to consider would be the ventilation in the area. So that is one way of mitigating that po. Uh, the main route is still droplet. It is still droplet. So hence the face masks, the face shield, uh, disinfection of the sur common surfaces that will be touched. Another is for the health protocols uh, prior, to the po uh, prior to reaching the polling station, such as our contact tracing activities, our health declaration form, um, symptomatic individuals are discouraged from uh, from uh, attending this con this uh, election in terms of physical gathering. So we have to think of alternatives to the voting uh, process. Another but suggestion: we've discussed, uh, we've discussed the possibility of special polling places in uh, quarantine, isolation, and even hospitals. Mm, okay, so that is one measure wherein we can also prevent the, uh, we can also manage crowd control, uh, ventilation, uh, this would be a challenge for enclosed areas. Uh, you know, the, reason is why, uh, the average, I'm sure you voted before, would the average school building suffice or would that uh, not be adequately ventilated? Yung mga luma yata na maraming uh, jalousies, okay, yung mga bago, uh, enclosed. Uh, yes, I think if we open windows, yung mga natural ventilation, that would be highly recommended po. Um, and also How we can... Uh, what, yes. what sort of health workers would you need on site? Mm, I think uh, given that we don't expect naman na this would be any different from before na in case lang siguro may himatayin, sobrang init, or that, we can have yung uh, behirts natin there. They are uh, well-equipped to attend to yung mga ganong needs. They can easily transport those who may become symptomatic po. Uh, because it is the most at risk that we have to watch out for in in this uh, in this activity. Yes. Uh what this committee uh, is encouraging, and that is in the early voting bill, is as many as uh, there are groups who are um, high risk or vulnerable should vote early. Yun nga lang, marami sa kanila ayaw mag-vote early dahil hindi makakaboto ng lokal. Puro national positions lamang. Pagkatapos, yung um, APP, palibasan, nahihirapan ang COMELEC at pati ang uh, mga LGU mag-set up ng APP, gawin na nating uh, dating EAP, which is uh, on the day of voting, there's a makeshift area, siguro ganda natin na ng konti. And ayon sa sinasabi ni Dr. Abdel Kawi, eh, gawin na natin dun sa stadium, town hall, or uh, some other better ventilated area. Tama ba yun? 
Yes, uh, Dr. Abdel Kawid, are you uh, uh, are you telling us only the BHertz is necessary um, to check yes, lang yes. that uh, to check lang that the health protocols are being observed, di ba? Yes. Um, pwede pa rin naman like before yung may mga nakastandby na emergency medical services team just in case someone faints or something happens. Pwede naman po. Yes, but uh, in relation, it, nothing special in relation to COVID? Uh, no, because I think what we have to address in terms of ganito is how we can isolate those who are symptomatic. Just in yes, case someone... Not, doctor, you're talking about disinfecting, non-crowding. Who's going to monitor that? That would be the local health uh, department po. Well, that's what I mean. Um, these are the health workers we need. Uh, who's going to uh, make sure that the uh, protocols are observed? The other thing is who's going to do the cleaning? In many cases, in LGUs that are far flung and very small, they simply don't have the equipment. What equipment are you prescribing at the DOH? Mm, okay. So uh, for hand hygiene, it would be the... 70% isopropyl alcohol. If in terms of the surfaces, uh, sodium hypochlorite or other disinfectants that would be for surfaces, yun po yung recommended po sana natin. For surfaces. The other query would be what occurred in the French election, and that is uh, they dissuaded voters from sharing uh, equipment. So, kanya-kanyang dala ng ball pen at saka uh, lapis para hindi na mag-share. Is that something that uh, you are encouraging as well? Yes, it's part of our recommendation. All common uh, items should, uh, as much as possible, i-avoid po natin yung sharing of items. Okay, all right. So how many do you recommend? Uh, uh, basta two meters on physical distancing. You know, yes, recommend. The ventilation po. We have to ensure the ventilation. How much ventilation is adequate? I mean, obviously in old buildings, there's some level of cross ventilation. Kailangan pa ba ng uh, uh, fans and so on and other uh, more complicated setups? There is this issuance from Dole uh, for the workplaces. Uh, it could be applicable in this case, pero medyo, um, if you really want to be tedious, yung CO2 monitor. So aside from, because natural ventilation, just by opening the windows and the doors, okay na po yun eh, and the two meters. But if you really want to monitor the CO2, of all the participants in a certain area, there is the, the CO2 monitor that is installed in closed areas. Yes. So that's one other. I doubt, I doubt that there are very many of those, but uh, you're saying just open windows. Yes. Okay. Is that all, doctor? Uh, mainly, yun po. Yun yung mga salient points po. Thank uh, Details are in the document. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank yes, you yes. Uh, we'll look at that very carefully. Is there anyone else from the health sector who'd like to uh, bolt in and add more uh, features that we need to observe? Um, um, so, yes, so, yes. Yeah. Yes, Madam Senator Tomentino, please. Is it now the, the correct impression that the recommendation coming from the previous resource person is that COMELEC should deputize DOH or local government health uh, workers, including private physicians and nurses. Is it uh, a recommendation that is uh, uh, viable now, uh, Madam Chair, uh, from the com coming from the comments of the first resource person, that we should now mobilize all health workers uh, for the 2022 elections and they should be deputized by the commission on elections um dr abdel kawi is that the impression is that the correct impression from what uh, you told us sinabi mo kasi yung b hertz uh, are equipped among the b hertz are volunteers bhw who don't necessarily comply 
uh, who don't necessarily count as government employees under the civil service, at yung iba pang private uh, organizations na sinasabi ni Senator Tol, uh, kailangan ba i-deputize ng uh, COMELEC yan para nandun sila sa polling place? Could be one option if we need to uh, address the manpower shortage in certain areas. Perhaps that could be applicable, especially in our Gida areas if there's a limited number of uh, health workers. So I think it would vary by uh, loca local government unit. Okay. Um, uh, perhaps uh, since Director Elnas is apparently here and Attorney Rodriguez from Comelec, is uh, that something that we can do without uh, overcrowding the precinct? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Good morning, Madam Senator, and good morning, Senator Tolentino, and good morning, everybody. Uh, beforehand, ma'am, uh, I would like to share, uh, if the chair would allow, our experience in the, during the Palawan plebiscite, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Yes, we requested that you run through that because that's our uh, best uh, um, information and what could occur in uh, an election during the time of COVID. Yes, Thank go you. ahead, Director Elnaz. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, so starting from campaign, ano, campaign period, uh, doon na natin, ini-expect na natin na uh, magkumpul-kumpulan, etc. So we see to it that there will be no violation as far as the IATF rules and regulation is concerned. So that's why uh, considering na hindi lahat ng areas mayroong internet internet connectivity, mayroong Facebook, etc. for them to avail of the basic information as, as far as the plebiscite is concerned, uh, andun pa rin yung pulong-pulong natin. We're in face-to-face -face encounter with the voters as well as the proponent or the uh, anti uh uh, yes, uh, would do the campaign and of course yung sa COMELEC. But uh, when... Elnas, there have been some alarming um, announcements from the COMELEC saying that all face-to-face uh, -face campaigning would be prohibited by COMELEC. Siyempre, hindi naman pwede yeah. yun. Yeah, yes, ma'am. That's why sa Palawan template natin, we have to do something for areas na walang, ano, walang internet connectivity. So pag mag uh, barangay pulong-pulong sa barangay yung election officer natin or yung proponent or ano yung kontra so we required that the area 50% lang ang pupunta sa area whether covered court basketball court or what gym do you mean by 50% director Elnas hindi ba dapat yung LGU kasi iba-iba naman ang status ng LGU yung iba 40 people yung iba 100 so, yeah, yeah. sundan na lang natin yung uh, hatol ng LGU, ganun ba? I, I, yes, ma'am. So, Kasi 50% call, is, not it, very, uh, uh, is not very helpful. Hindi natin alam. Eh, yung iba, yung 50% nila, eh, putok na putok pa rin. Yes, ma'am. So, the election, ang isa pang instruction ng election officer is that uh, yung basic social distancing required by IATF is required, is, is complied. Is a mandatory. Na yes, ma'am. That would be ano, ma more effective than the yung usual natin na one meter social distancing. And oh. aside from that, during the kanda ko pulong pulong, mandatory yung pagwear ng face mask at saka face shield at saka mayroong sanitation station. Bago papasok, mayroon ng sanitation station. Dadaan sila sa sanitation station and do the ano before they can do the info campaign. Then, Sino yung naglagay ng uh, sanitation station, extra face mask and shield? Sino yung, barangay, yung barangay mismo, ma'am, ang nag so, walang gastos in doon yung walang gastos doon yung COMELEC? Wala, ma'am, because basically, uh, yung plebisito, ma'am, is shouldered by the local government unit. Tama. Yes, ma'am. So, after that, yung sa ano natin, sa campaign, yun yung tang nagiging template natin. Then, isang ano natin is yung distribution and verification ng sa treasurer's office. Kasi yung exper experience natin, pag mag-verify at kukuha ng mga balots para pernilya ang mga teachers natin, nagkukumpul-kumpulan yan before. So ngayon, right. we, see, we see to it that only one ang pupunta, one representative from the electoral board para pupunta mag-check and get the official ballots and documents. Then on election day, we made it mandatory that 
uh, sa lahat ng mga voting centers kung saan nandun yung mga classrooms, mayroong health officials na nandun. It is composed so, of either... Doon sa entrance mismo, ma'am, and doon yes. nakastation yung either uh, personnel ng municipal health office office or barangay health officer. So doon sila nakastation, bago papasok yung butante, chichek na yung temperature niya. So mandatory yun. So once makita ng ano, sa rules namin, once makita yung mayroong 37 point something above, dadalhin siya sa isolated uh, isolation polling place. Doon mayroong naka-assign din ng electoral board who will conduct the voting, no? Facilitate the voting so that kahit nag mayroon siyang ano lagnat, makakaboto pa rin siya. But of course with the more stringent requirements. Then aside from that, uh, mayroon tayong isolation polling places sa bawat uh, polling place. Uh, Ini-emphasize so, natin. Ito tinatawag natin EAP dati, ano? Hindi po, ma'am. Iba ito, ma'am. Ito yung, ano, ma'am, isolation polling place intended okay. solely for uh, voters na nagkakaroon ng temperature higher so, than 37 points. So, ito pa to sa priority lane ng seniors, PWS. Yes, ma'am. Iba ito, ma'am. Iba ito, okay. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, mayroong nakalagay doon sa, ano, uh, doon sa voting center mismo, mayroong dinesignate tayo ng COVID marshal who is the DepEd highest official within the school campus. Siya yung mag-maintain ng no crowding, walang magkumpol-kumpol, walang pagalagala ng mga botante. Of course, with the help of the PNP and AFP para ma-maintain yung uh, walang crowding, ma-maintain yung social distancing. O, paano yung tinatanong ni Senator Tel Tolentino? Magde-deputize kayo ng... Uh ng uh, DOH o hindi na yes. kasi nasa labas lang sila? Yes ma'am, uh, every elections just like what we did sa 2016 and 2019, we deputized the, the Department of Health and yung time na yun wala pang COVID but we installed, we, we set up and established health center, our emergency health uh, center doon sa voting center mismo. That time. Okay. Pero this time, uh, i-enhance pa natin yan to the point na talagang ano, pagpasok pa lang, andun na yung mga health officials to, to check and verify the condition of the voters. Di ba naging magulo sa Palawan? Parang ang dami-daming tao sa loob ng presinto. Hindi may naman ma'am. May police, may, uh, uh, may FN, may COVILEC. Karambola ba yun? Hindi naman karambola man because sa layout natin ma'am nakadagay kung saan sila ano pupwesto. So organize yung ano na alam nila kung saan sila pupwesto, the police, the health uh, officials at saka mayroon din tayong nilagay ma'am na voters assistance desk. Ito yung mga mga uh, <clears throat> uh, election ano natin, uh, citizens arm natin yung PPCRB at saka NAMPREL, they will assist voters Turuan kung ano yung presinto niya at saka mayroong layout para hindi siya pagalagala, ituturo kagad kung saang room siya. Saka hindi na sila titingin doon sa labas ng room, doon sa listahan para hahanapin yung pangalan nila. So mayroon tayong nilagay na ganun to assist voters. Then doon sa ano ma'am, doon sa loob mismo ng polling place, doon sa classroom, mayroong mandatory na sanitation station. Bago papasok yung botante, bago papasok yung electoral board, nakalagay na doon ang alcohol, mayroon pang ibang washing areas para maghugas, magsanitize ng kamay. Bago pagpasok ng botante, iisuhan siya ng gloves at saka mandatory na naka-face mask siya. Yung uh, gloves? Yung gloves? So, may gloves pa yung botante? Yes, ma'am. Kasama yon sa allocation ng COVID supplies natin, ma'am. Tapos, with the instruction as much as possible, voters should bring their own ball pens para hindi na maghiriman, magkahawaan. Aside from that, ma'am, yung mga teachers natin, nakaseparate yan through uh, plastic barriers na sinet up and install days before the plebiscite. 
So, walang contact in a way yung between voters pa and electoral board. Paano, Tapos, yung, paano yung ink kung may nakagloves yung botante? <laughs> Tinatanggal ma'am, tapos ano, uh, nilagay patakan lang, tapos tapon na yung ano. Uh, that will be before leaving the ano ma'am, before leaving the okay. polling place. Yes ma'am. So yun, tapos yung mga voting booth natin, mayroon ding nakaharang na mga plastic barriers to the point na yung kabilang botante hindi siya makakapag-contact sa ibang botante. So naka-install yan bago pa ang uh, plebisito ma'am. And it's the local government unit that provided and set up those uh, barriers, physical barriers, to ensure that. But this time, it will have to be Comelec. Yes, ma'am. Yon ang tinitingnan ngayon, ma'am. Uh, it needs budgetary requirements, especially nationwide. Ito and isa pang dilema namin dito, ma'am, is that unlike sa Palawan plebiscite, we only required, we only allow five voters at a given time na papasok at boboto. Pagkatapos ng lima, alis, pasok yung lima. So, this time, mayroon kaming ang ano dyan, medyo problema dahil uh, with the national and local elections and the limited number of BCMs available na gagamitin, so mapipilitan kami na babalik kami sa 1,000 uh, voters per clustered precincts. Nung sa Palawan plebiscite, it's only 200 maximum per clustered precincts. So again, it will entail budgetary requirements if in case at saka medyo huli na dahil yung BCM uh, nag-start na yung refurbish at saka yung pera tama lang sa uh, refurbishment for the BCMs. I think Senator anyway, PR is... Uh... Raising our hand, Senator Villar, please. Ah, uh, Senator Aimee, tatanong ko lang yung sinasabi mo na you can ah uh, yung mga ah uh, <clears throat> ano tawag dito mga senior citizen at saka people with comorbidity mauuna silang bumoto. That's a day before or several days before. Ano ang suggestion doon? And then but uh, meron kasi uh, ngayon at uh, ngayon we are we have something called the APP na pwede silang mag er, mag uh, vote uh, sa ibang lugar. Pero yung sinasuggest namin na early voting na within 30 days or uh, minim, maximum 2 days before the election eh makaboto na sila. So that's why uh, that's the bill that I was pushing for uh, you, you said uh Ayaw nila dahil they cannot vote for local government officials. Why? Kasi uh, before the day of the elections, we cannot uh, we can't break the treasurer's seal uh, and open up all the uh, printed ballot. So yung bibigay sa kanila, yung blank ballot, tapos susulatin lang nila yun. Di ba ganun yun, Director Elnas? Uh, eh, di ba pwede rin naman pabotohin sila sa local? Kasi unfair naman na hindi pa babotohin ang senior citizen at saka people with comorbidity sa local. Parang depriving them of their right to vote. They have two options kasi what I was suggesting was that they should have two options. Either they vote early, manual, and only national, which is actually what's being done with AFP, uh, we have the PNP, the teachers. If they vote early, kasi they are supposed to uh, use the manual ballots. But if it's on the day, ayon, then they can uh, they can avail of the usual ballots. But can the Comelec not make arrangement that uh, even if they vote early, they can vote for local officials? Director Elnas, the question here was, if you recall, the question was the security of the ballots. We cannot open them before the day of the election, di ba? Y y yes, ma'am, but operationally, pwede naman yung ano, ma'am, uh, si shade lang nila, but on the day of the elections, iahatid kung saan yung presinto para isama na sa batch feeding. So that they will be using still yung balota na, no, automated ballot, but without the benefit of themselves, uh, feeding into the machine. Eh, marami yatang uh, nini-nervous dyan. Kasi... Yeah, yun, yun lang ang problema dyan, ma'am. May mga ano, security issues tayo. And kasi, kailangan, oh. 
Senator Aimee, I don't think na na makakaya na iboto ng one day yung lahat na yon pag uh, may ganyang safety protocol. Safety Ay, health protocol. Eh. Mahirap yan. I, I think magkakagulo sa presinto. Yeah. Unless da damihan natin yung mga present uh, places, yung ano. That's so, right. Otherwise, magkakagulo yan, magkahawahan yan. <laughs> Yung ideal nga namin sana was sa uh, 500, di ba, Director El Nas? Yun ang dinidiscuss namin na hanggat kaya, 500 sana kada presinto lang. Eh, kaso nga, mukhang kinukulang yung mga VCM. But since we're far from election, maybe we can do something about it and prepare for that. Kasi tingin ko... If we follow the same protocol, makakagulo kasi ano mas matagal because of the health protocol. Hindi makakaboto mga tao. I agree po. That's why uh, medyo kinakabahan rin tayo. And I'm happy that Yusek Alain is here from DepEd. They've actually volunteered to do a two-shifting process. Kasi ayaw nga ng Comelec at uh, marami sa atin na mag-overnight pa o magdalawa o tatlong araw. Kasi mas lalo nakakatakot na naman yung uh, delay. Kaya lang, marami rin kinakabahan sa dalawang shift. Kasi pag turnover, magulo na naman. Although the teachers have been uh, very helpful and supportive saying that they're willing to do it. Yun nga lang, may budgetary na naman. Doble na naman yung allowance sa teachers. Maybe Yusek Alain can explain. Uh, Thank you, Madam Senator. We're, going to, we're talking about lengthening the hours, no? 2019, yes, mahaba na yung oras, eh, di ba? Pero hahaba ang paraw. Yes, yes ma'am, kasi uh, during the previous elections, we have observed and uh, our public school teachers have reported that they usually wake up and start the, the day at uh, 4 a.m., some yes. even earlier. And then uh -oh. they finish at night at uh, about 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Masyado nang overstretch, ma'am, uh, yung number of hours. Tapos sa gabi, wala pa silang makukuhang transportation kahit may transportation allowance pa sila. So because of this difficulty, we have uh, proposed uh, some, uh, propo uh, we have submitted some proposals to COMLEC. Sabi nga namin, baka pwedeng to shift uh, para uh, mas maayos yung trabaho ng mga teacher. At saka yung sa transportation, Imbes na transportation allowance, baka pwede yan na uh, i-commander yung kuha ng, o i-deputize ng COMELEC yung mga sasakyan. Kasi kahit may pera na. sila, ma'am, kahit may pera sila, Madam Senator, na pang-travel, uh, pang-arkila, uh, wala naman makukuhang mga... Wala naman yung mapasada ng ganong kalait sa probinsya. Yun na nga, ma'am, eh. Kaya yun so yung maybe baka yung barangay, pwede silang mag-service. May mga sasakyan naman ng barangay. That's right. Hmm. And uh, I think long hours, and then uh, hindi talaga magagawa na with this kind of protocol na matapos yung election on the same okay. thing. Dapat yata damihan nyo yung presinto. Correct. Oh. Uh, Director Elnas, is that workable? Because many of your election officers have been complaining that two shifts will become unmanageable and impossible to secure right. sa turnover. Tama, tama more, yun, ma'am. Baka more election present na lang, more more places to vote. An additional budget for Red Bull. <laughs> for the teachers. Sa, sana, ma'am. Uh, but unfortunately, at present, we only have, I, I think, if I remember it right, 97,000 BCMs. Eh, di bumili. Uh, may yeah. time pa naman bumili kaysa mapospon ng election. Correct. At makagulo election. Bumili na lang, di ba? Kasi, at saka, yung, ako, I used to be a watcher in an election. Because, <laughs> diba, you know, my, 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 my father was a mayor when I was young. So, I used to watch election procedure. Ang hirap-hirap na nga with the, without this protocol, health protocol. Ang hirap-hirap na ng election sa, sa presinto. I, I have been experiencing election in the precinct. Tapos may health protocol pa, di lalo magkakagulo. Dapat damihan nyo na lang ang election precinct at uh, election uh, places para huwag magkagulo. Kasi magkakagulo yan. Baka hindi bumoto mga tao. Matakot. Yung ideal nga nun, yung TIGFA 500. Pero sinasabi ni Director Elnas, kakayanin lang nila 1,000 kada precinct. Doble yun ang gusto natin. Ah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, with that, ma'am, with your permission, uh, we will bring that matter to the steering committee. Uh, oh. Kasi kailangan ng policy yan. And of course, yung process ng pagbili uh, for relief mm -hmm. ng PCMs. And of course, yung process ng bidding and the availability of funds. Yeah. It's good that we're talking about it as early as today so we can do something about it. Makakagulo yan. In February, in fairness, nagtatag na yung COMELEC ng task force tungkol sa COVID elections dahil nga dun sa Palawan. Kaya medyo maganda yung takbo nun. So hopefully, as uh, Senator Villar says, we should be able to prepare. Yeah, but Palawan is a less populated place. My yeah, God, if you're in Metro Manila, my God, that's very different. And in the cities, it's very different. Oh. So, medyo mas konti pa tao sa Palawan. Oo. But dito sa amin, maraming tao dito. <laughs> Naku, magkakagulo kami. Oo. Eh, Senator Tolentino, I think this impinges yes, yes, also on the barb. Kaya yes, yes, yes. ng mga two-shift at uh, early voting. Naku po, Senator Tolentino. Uh, Ma Ma Madam Chair, uh, siguro dito papasok yung hybrid elections. Um, Kaya okay. nga. So, even with a COVID situation, I think that would ease the long lines and suggestion ko lang, since uh, relative to my first question, since the COMELEC is inclined to deputize the OH and other health workers, perhaps they should likewise think of the possibility of not just deputizing the persons, but the institutions and the centers. So I'm not talking of health centers to be used as a voting center. I'm, I'm talking of a, a satellite hospital to be used as a voting center to expand the the voting process uh, with with uh, medical uh, protocols embedded kasi nandun na sila eh. so oh, yun oh, lang po oh. chair ginagawa naman ah, uh, nag, uh, na, uh, nagdadala naman ng special polling place sa uh, sa home for the aged uh, dati rati yung COMELEC pati sa mga preso sa detainees para makaboto sila but like you said I think we'll probably have to try and expand this ang problema nga yung balota kung yung manual ba o talagang pipilitin natin na buklatin na yung uh, printed yun ang problema Senator Villar please Ah, uh, tsaka ngayon, ang dami-dami na multi-purpose centers sa uh, lahat ng lugar sa Pilipinas. So, oh, pwede oh. rin gawing voting places yun, yung voting, uh, ba tawag do? Uh, 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 yun. Kasi sa amin, mas madami pa yata ang, uh, ang, ang uh, covered court kaysa eskwelahan eh. <laughs> Mahilig ang mga tao sa covered court. So, mm -hmm. I guess that can be voting places also. Director Elna, yes. is there a COMELEC limitation? Kasi parati na lang public school building. Doon nagre-reklamo nga yung PWD at yung seniors, di naman nila maakyat yung second, third floor. Pati yung DepEd na may edad na, eh, nagre-reklamo kasi akyat pa na. Oh. Um, ngayon, ang sinasabi ng DOH, kinakailangan open, uh, open uh, cross-ventilation. So, Meron bang limitation? Can we set up precincts elsewhere besides these schools? Pwede ba dun sa uh, multipurpose, auditorium, ganun? At uh, yung mga stadium na ginagamit, mas bukas yun eh. Actually ma'am, wala namang limitation. Ang default lang talaga natin dyan ma'am is public school buildings or classrooms. But at present, mayroon na tayong mga voting centers na covered court basketball yeah. court gym. So mayroon na tayo. In fact, mayroon pang ibang ano natin diyan yung mga multi-purpose building sa barangay. Yes. Yung ginagamit natin. And as of now, ma'am, we are having an inventory of all these uh, open spaces, covered courts, other spacious buildings within the barangay so that in the event na no, pwede nating i-transfer uh, yung mga voting centers natin. Of course, following the rules Following, following the procedures under the Omnibus Election Code. Kasi parang mas safer yung ganon kesa sa nakakulog na naman sa eskwelahan. Yes, ma'am. Tama, ma'am. And as uh, Senator Villar uh, observed, napakarami ng uh, multi-purpose building ngayon. Kada barangay, halos may dalawa, tatlo yung iba. Yes, ma'am. Tama yan, ma'am. Especially dito sa Metro Manila, wherein isang school nagkikater ng two to three or five barangays. So, ang trend natin dyan ngayon is i-diffuse ito and place it in some other areas within 
uh, near doon sa residence ng mga voters natin so that madiklag yung school at the same time ma-co-comply natin yung minimum health standards. Okay. Doon sa VCMs, yes, Senator Villar speaking, parang uh, audio please. Opo. Uh, sa amin, ang ginagamit na vaccination center are the covered court. That's right. So, so kung ginagamit na vaccination center, pwede din polling places, di ba? Tama yan, ma'am. Tagalas Pinas po ako, ma'am. So, nakita <laughs> ko yung ano, ma'am. Sa Talundos po ako, ma'am. Oh yeah. Oh, nakita ko yung ano ma'am nasa covered court basketball area yung ano yung sa oh, oh. amin. Director Elnas doon yeah. sa bilangan napansin ko na dumadami yung tao. Syempre excited ano. Ah uh, napansin ko doon sa mga footage at sa sa mga retrato nagkukumpol-kumpulan yung mga tao sa bilangan eh. Y yes ma'am, uh, isa din ano yung sa talaga maiwasan gusto gusto talaga natin malaman ang resulta Yes ma'am not only sa counting ma'am doon sa Palawan natin sa template natin ng Palawan yeah. we limit the number of watchers na papasok we limit the number of voters and of course uh, basic lang na doon yung electoral board just like gaya din yan sa counting ma'am we limit it to the watchers para sila lang ang nandoon and Siguro, we, we, ano, uh, by the time we will craft the, ano, the general instructions for the next elections, uh, incorporate na rin natin yan na uh, we will discourage people from ano, uh, watching or ob witnessing or observi observing the counting. Anyway, andun na, yung mga, andun, andun na yung mga watchers. Pwede ba mag-live stream? Malimbawa yung mga watchers? Pinapayagan ba sila magdala ng phone tapos magla-live stream sila? Kasi syempre, ugaling Pilipino, parang piyesta yung bilangan eh. Yes ma'am, that's what we are looking also na i-allow natin yung live streaming but hindi lang natin i-allow yung uh, during voting na while a voter okay, feels up the ballot, magkukuha ng, ano, magla-live stream, magkukuha ng video yung watchers or anybody else ma'am. Pwede yung sa counting, ma'am, na ano? For, for, not during voting, but perhaps during count, canvas, uh, counting and canvas. Tama ba yun? Yes, ma'am. So that everybody will have access, kahit wala sila physically, but virtually nakikita nila on what transpired doon sa loob ng presinto, ma'am. Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, um, are there any other takeaways from the Palawan voting? Uh, in terms of budget, like you said, ang problema natin, may 17% uh, increase ka, 22 million. Ngunit, halos lahat sinagot pala ng LGU. Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, because doon sa batas calling for the plebiscite sa Palawan, it nakalagay doon na it's really the LGU that will shoulder all the expenses. But for purposes of the 2022 national and local elections, uh, pinaktor, pinaktor in na natin yung COVID supplies uh, mula dito sa pag-prepare sa main office, sa mga warehouses natin hanggang sa polling places natin po. And that will include uh, COVID supplies for our electoral boards, pati na yung other uh, government agencies na magtatrabaho doon sa voting centers, performing election duties doon sa voting centers po. I see, I see. Um, eto nga, maybe you can help us also answer uh, Senator Tolentino's query about the lack of an electoral code and no geographical uh, um, divisions set for BARM. Is there anyone who can answer uh, the earlier query regarding the BARM election and the readiness of BTC to conduct such? Director Elnas or Attorney uh, Rodriguez, either of you ba uh, is familiar with the BARM setup? Uh, Ma'am? Yes, please. Uh, uh, on the part, sa side ng COMELEC po, uh, we were re uh, no, requested by the technical working group of the, the BTA to comment or make some suggestions and recommendations on the draft uh, Bangsamoro Electoral Code, which the NBank last, uh, if I remember it right, last Ma May 11, approved the 
comments and recommendations uh, na ginawa ng technical working group ng COMELEC based din doon sa draft uh, electoral code na sinabmit ng BTA. And I, I believe, if I, I, ano, uh, I believe na itatransmit na yon officially doon sa Bangsamoro Transition Authority, ma'am, or sa Bangsamoro Government, ma'am, for their consideration. So, Senator Torrentino, itatransmit na raw, tapos na daw yung draft nung May 11, approved na rin ng COMELEC, at itatransmit na lamang sa BTA? There Pero ano problem. pa yun, ma'am? Ma? Sa, sa COMELEC na side lang yun, ma'am. Uh, the Technical Working Group of the Bangsamoro will discuss it and yeah. oh, sa COMELEC side lang ang ano ma'am yung recommendations okay. and ano namin does uh, it include does it include the geographical delineation of the parliamentary districts hindi na namin tinakil yan sir because that will be the prerogative of the ano sir uh, doon sa BTA sir so the the code the code would consider the the carving out of the parliamentary districts as an addendum or annex yes sir ang ang That's sa sure, amin sir. yes sir ang sa amin lang sir is yung ano oh, oh, general principles yes sir at saka yung provisions on registration codification and consolidation of election offenses uh, registration ng parties accreditation ng parties etc so the existing with the permission of the chair the existing omnibus election code would just serve as a supplement or will apply only in a supplementary character the main the main code the main uh, the main operative code would be the one supposed to be enacted by the Bangsamoro parliament is that correct tama yan sir it's not only bp881 but as well as 9369 on automation law uh, 8189 on registration and at such other ano election laws na uh, enforce and effect as of now, sir. So, final question. If there is no electoral code and parliamentary districting, can we apply just the omnibus election code? Can can COMELEC uh, enforce all election laws and conduct an elections without without a Bangsamoro electoral code? Uh, sa opinion ko dyan, sir, is we can still conduct as far as ano, the local elections for Bangsamoro but as far as the parliamentary elections doon, mahirapan kasi kami, sir, kasi wala kaming basis on sa allocation ng ballots, pag-print ng ballots, etc. So local so, elections would be the mayors, councillors, governors? Okay lang yan, sir. Walang problema, sir. Except but itong... But parliament? Yes, sir. But the parliament, can you conduct? Uh, medyo mahirapan. Mayroon kaming operational at saka administrative ano dyan, sir. Uh, issues dahil one, anong basis namin saka second yung sa filing ng COC etc sir pati yung pagprint ng ballots allocation etc thank you thank you thank you madam chair yes thank you very much and uh, does that mean director elnas if uh, the bta determine not to automate their elections they can do so balik manual uh, hindi po mag uh, uh, they would follow the template dito sa national ano natin ma'am because Aha, basically so sorry lang in character yung national uh, electoral laws uh, kasi sa 9369 ma'am uh, it's mandated na elections for the national and local elections shall be automated ma'am uh, as a matter of fact i recall that uh, the pilot for automation was actually conducted in the old ARMM, di ba? Tama yun, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So, I hope that uh, told us something, uh, Senator Tolentino. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I would also like to know if there's an IATF representative here. Um, Comsec. May IATF tayo. Wala, walang dumating? Only DOH, ma'am, sent a letter to us confirming their attendees. I sent a letter, ma'am, to IATF. Yes, that's fine. Uh, and... Never mind the letters. Did someone turn up? None, none for okay. IATF. Okay, if that's the case, let's call on the DICT uh, and the DOST because we're very excited about the use of the digital signatures. Medyo binibida natin na DICT and DOST are now capable of um, 
uh, using digital signatures and that the COMELEC has gathered them as a matter of fact from uh, the BEIs from precinct level all the way up. As a matter of fact, I think Commissioner Ko even announced that digital receipts to uh, the transparency server could now be provided. Can we hear from the DICT COMELEC Advisory Council, please? Director Urbistondo Jr. Po. Um, is there anyone from the ICT or the OST? Hello. Uh, yeah. Opa. Good, yes. Good morning. Uh, from the OST? Yes. Uh, um, yes. Um, there's been a lot of uh, media coverage regarding your newfound capacity to provide digital signatures as well as a digital receipt. Um, uh, yes, ma'am. Is uh, that something we can look forward to? Uh, the, the digital signatures are... Uh, primarily within the domain of the DICT. They are the ones who manage the public key infrastructure as well as the enrollment and issuance of uh, the digital, the personal digital signatures. I for understand. Our BIs. Uh, you're, uh, is there anyone from the DICT here? Um, committee Secretary, please. Yes, ma'am. Director Urbistondo Jr. Po. Yes, I think you were calling him uh, earlier. Is he still around? Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, good morning. Yeah, can you turn on your video? It's a little bit difficult to follow. Marami rami kasi tayo eh. Pasensya. Yes, the ICT, please. Sanda siya. <laughs> Ayan, okay. Yes, please proceed, the ICT. Yeah. Yes, Madam, Madam Chair, good morning once again. Uh, in the of JCT, uh, we can we can uh, provide uh, digital signatures. In fact, we have target for this year. In fact, our yes. No, the is, reason being that uh, the, the digital signatures were promised in the last two elections, but in fact, they did not uh, occur. So we would like to know if, in fact, uh, they will be happening this time, finally. Uh, we will super it, uh, Madam Chair. Ano yun? Yeah, I, I, I understand that uh, you already collected signatures, kaya nga, we wanted to know kung magagamit ba talaga yan? Uh, yes, so, um, uh, Yeah, but what's changed from 2019 to 2022 that makes it possible now when it wasn't possible before? I think we'll be having more dialogue with uh, Comelec Pop in regards to this one. Uh, I think digital signatures are enabled by infrastructure and engineering, not by dialogue. So uh, have we invested in uh, better uh, systems and equipment or, or not? Well, the Chair, we have a lot of digital signatures in digital signature actually. Sorry, uh, I, you're very unclear. Yeah. Sorry, Bob. Keep on putting on the data digital signature. Uh, it can only be attached to the document provided. It is required. Yeah. Keep no, but we've not used them before. That's my point. Uh, if you see, we talked okay. about them for two elections and they never came to fruition. So I'd just like to know. Uh, maraming press release. Talaga bang mangyayari? Mapapahiya tayo. Uh, it will, uh, it will, I it, uh, see you sick money, Roger. Thanks, Thank you. Yes, you sick money. Hi, ma'am. Let's the drive lang po. Um, Nasa ka na. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh -uh. Hello, yes, ma'am. Yes, you sick okay. kindly. Yes, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. Uh, good morning po. Uh, we are in talks now with Comelec. May plano po kami ngayon with DepEd for the enrollment of the 300,000 teachers to be able to use the digital signatures. And timeline namin is from uh, September to January this year. Mapigyan namin sila ng digital signing privileges. So okay. tama po naman kayo. 
this is gonna be the first time. Ang challenge right now for me is yung issuance. Issuance, yung pagbigay sa 300,000. Pero we are in talks naman with DepEd. We have a what plan right issuance? now. What do you mean by issuance? What do you mean by issuance? Issue, ma'am. Para ang teacher, kaya niyang, kay kakayahan siya to sign the election return through the system po. Bigyan sila ng signing authority, a digital signature po. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. So, ang, ang challenge at this point, ngayon, nandun kami sa pag- uh, pag-register para magkaroon sila, ma sila ng digital signature at magamit sa eleksyon po. So, right Tapos, now, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Sa election day proper ng Senator, uh, tuturuan din natin sila kung paano gamitin on the election day proper ang pag-sign ng election return po. Okay. You have the equipment for this because as I recall, Yun nga, hindi nangyari. Ano yung pagbabago mula ng 2019 hanggang 2022? Nakabili ba kayo ah, okay. ng okay. Okay. equipment? May systems ba tayo? Ano ba nagbago na kaya na ninyo ngayon? Okay. Ah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, noong 2019, hindi umabot ang, ang, pag, ang pagbigay namin ng issuance. Yung kakayahan to issue at that time. Hindi kami nakapagpabid earlier para makapag-issue po. At saka, late na bigay sa amin ang timeline po. January na kami nag-umpisa, eh, May na yun. So ngayon po, inagahan po namin, ma'am. Okay. So sino ba naging, ano yun, na-delay yung issuance? So sino ba naging na issuance? So, sino na-delay ko? Amelie ko kayo. Sa, uh, bitin na po yung timeline nun, ma'am. Eh. Ilalagay kasi Kaya nga, sino ba nagbibigay ng issuance? Kami po, kami po naman. 2019, 2018, 2019 po yan dapat, ma'am. Eh, kasalanan pala ninyo, so, eh. So, kasalanan pala ninyo na late kayo. Ang uh, DIC I think, na na late. Hindi, ma'am. Ma it was in the coordination of the timelines po, ma'am. Uh, yun po, ma'am. Ma'am? Yes, Yusek, uh, Yusek Alain ba? Ma'am. Director Elnas. Director Elnas po, ma'am. Okay, okay. Sige. Uh, 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 update lang, ma'am. Um, ma explanation. Yes, please. Ma'am, update lang, ma'am. Uh, as of now, uh, tapos na yung pag-uusap namin with the ICT. And in fact, tapos na yung seminar and lecture natin. Uh, pagbigay ng instruction sa lahat ng mga election officers natin at provincial election supervisors as okay. far as the enrollment of the digital signatures of the electoral board. And na-deploy na rin namin yung mga equipment that will be used for the enrollment of the uh, digital signature of the elect electoral board. So we will we'll be starting the actual enrollment. Uh, I-jumpstart na namin yan by June para in time makuha na namin lahat and magamit natin sa elections. Kaya nga eh, kaya nagtataka ako bakit Ina sinasabi ni Manny kaintik na bakit sinasabi ni Yusek Manny September pa eh, kung pwede na ngayon. Kasi nababalitaan ko, nag enroll na daw yung mga teachers eh. Is that correct, Yusek Alain? Tapos na po kami sa aming training sa sa Comilet. And it's time na September, now na. Madam Chair. Sino po yun? Sabay-sabay tayo. Dep, Madam and Chair. explain please. Yes. Madam Chair, the COMELEC actually uh, already approved a resolution requiring all public school teachers who will serve in the electoral board to register uh, dun sa Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure or PNPKI digital signature. Right. What we do on the part of the DepEd is to request uh, the ICT to waive some of the a uh, hard copy requirement, but instead, DepEd would be uh, providing them Excel file or CSV file containing DepEd employees' verified data for bulk processing. Because we're looking here of about 900,000 of uh, DepEd employees, and we can do this. They, we can register via online. We have already provided them uh, the, the way, the methodology of how we will do it, and I think the ICT is now evaluating that methodology 
Kasi pag magawa namin yan, uh, Madam Chair, well, July tapos na yan. Uh, oh, uh, meron na digital signature sa lahat. Eh, mabuti yung ganon para mabilis kasi parating dahilan, delay, delay, tapos nagkakaturoan. Eh, mas maganda, uh, agahan na natin, sabi nga ni Senator Villar, eh, apakaraming health protocols. Kung anong magagawang maaga, gawin na. Tama po. Sige pa, ma ma'am. Tama po si Yusek Kalain, ma'am. Uh, Nire-relax po namin yung pag-enroll at sa tulong po ng DepEd, uh, kanilang mga division, superintend, uh, division, and regions, katuwang po namin sila sa pag-enroll uh, at distribute ng mga digital signatures sa mga election officers po. Thank you po. Yeah, but uh, I think you say Kalene is correct. Uh, you should just piggyback on their system given that they're uh, highly accustomed to uh, registering and monitoring their 900,000 employees at DepEd. So perhaps just plugging into that online registry system will expedite the entire process. So, so maaari sa hanap din yan. That, Madam Chair, thank you po. Okay. Ano yung digital receipt to the transparency server? Ano ibig sabihin ng digital receipt na nabalitaan? Um, Inannounce yata ni Commissioner ko ng Comelec at uh, sumang-ayo naman yung DICT. Ano ba yung receipt? Ma'am, perhaps the Comelec can, uh, can explain on that, ma'am. Kami, I, we're, we're on the signing po. Ah, sige, sige. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yusek Mani. Uh, Director Elnas, you are aware of uh, this uh, digital receipt? Uh, if, uh, ano ma'am, I refer lang kita sa ano, uh, representative from ano, uh, the Information Technology Department namin, ma'am. I think he is in attendance in general, ano? Uh, Odek. Odek, kung nandito ka para ma-explain. Okay lang naman. It's yes, just a point of information. If it's not available right now, I'm perfectly happy to receive it in writing later on. Yes? Yeah, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, medyo technical yung ano, aspect na yan. Uh, Kaya, okay. Sige. Uh, sir, just a short uh, description po, ma'am, madam Chair, doon sa uh, uh -oh. voter receipt. Uh -oh. The purpose po is to have the voter receipt of the BCM also transmitted to the transparency server. I'm sorry, these uh, digital receipts are... Siya. I'm sorry, are these voter receipts? Yes, ma'am. Sabi mo voter po. receipt. Akala ko yung voter digital receipt. receipt. Ha? Voter receipt po, voter receipt. Uh, it will be digitally transmitted. The voter receipts, all those millions and millions of receipts will be transmitted to the transparency server? Yes, Paul. Okay. All right. And that helps us how? Not the ERs pala. The, for audit, po, ma'am. For audit and transparency, po. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's one of the requests po from uh, political parties and media practitioners eh, for them to have the comparison po dun sa, both, sa BCM and sa transparency. How soon will the digital uh, voter receipts arrive at the transparency server? That will be the same time po ma'am nung ER. A real time sa ER? Yes po. Okay. All right, thanks. If you can just submit something, because like you said earlier, it's quite technical, and perhaps you can give her give us a little more uh, detail regarding that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the ICT. Um, isa rin pag pinag-aabalahan natin eh, yung sa DFA, I know there are uh, representatives here regarding overseas voting because we have such a miserable turnout. Um, is there anyone from the FA who is uh, able to answer that query? Um, Good morning. Yes. Please Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, yes. Zoilo Velasco, po, uh, DFA, Overseas, Overseas Voting Secretary Vice Chair. Yes, indeed, uh, Madam Chair, uh, there's been a slow uh, out, uh, uh, registration because of the pandemic, and that has been actually shown by the numbers uh, as of as of no, today, or as of yes. Wala pa ako sa pandemic. <laughs> Ang sinasabi ko yung 2019 yata, 300,000 lang yata bumoto, 330,000. 
So 1.8 million na nagrehistro, 330,000 lang. The uh, with respect to the voter turnout, uh, 336,000 po. Uh, that's 18.47 percent. Okay. Speak slowly, please. Uh, it's 336,549. That's right. That's 18.47 percent po of the total registered for the 2019 uh, senatorial election. Oo, bakit ganun ka konti at ang dami-daming reklamo na hindi dumating ang balota at magulo? Uh, yung sa postal I mean, voting po. This is really po, hindi 20% na nakaboto sa overseas. Eh alam ko, yung ating mga OFW, gustong-gustong bumoto ng mga yan. <laughs> yes ma'am. Ang dami uh, yung sa tarik, eh. Kaya nga ako nagtataka, ba't nagkaganon? Mm -hmm. Ma'am, yung sa postal voting po, mayroon... Uh, I think there was a problem with respect to encoding by the by the encoders ng ano uh, ng the Tamilic part. Uh, mali mali mga addresses uh, the, the 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 postal code mali the address the the no, I'm confused. even the country. No, <laughs> I, the I, country I, I, na kamali. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm confused. You managed okay. to you might. You, it, I don't think it's an encoding issue. I think it's much worse than that. You managed to register. Eh. Bakit hindi nakaboto? Yes, ma'am. Um, it's uh, an that... encoding issue because they're encoded na in the registration, di ba? Yes, ma'am. So, ma ibig sabihin, yung voting ang problema, but hindi nakaboto? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I think, ma'am, historically po kasi talagang ganun yung voter turnout. So, for example, in 2013 senatorial election, it's 16.11% po ang voter turnout. So, medyo nag-increase na siya for the 2019, naging 18.47. Uh, I think uh, it's also po the mindset of the people. So, marami sa kanila nag-register kasi they were hoping they could get the, the voters' ID. But then when election times come, election time comes, hindi na sila naging that active to to ano to to vote even despite the the drive information drive by the foreign service posts by the DFA by the Comelec medyo kaming uh, senador na narito tumakbo noong 2019 si Senator Villar Senator Tolentino lahat kami tumakbo at lahat kami I'm sure rinaklamuhan ng ating mga OFW di daw sila nakaboto at walang balota magulo wala raw pangalan uh, ano ba nangyari? Uh, may mga ganong issue At po, ma'am. At bakit tayo nag improve halos? Kada election, yung OFW, hindi pa rin nakakaboto. May mga ganong issue nga po, ma'am. At yun po yung ina-address namin with Comelec. Kasi, for example, what I, what I was referring to with respect dun sa mali sa encoding, uh, I think we are now trying to to clean up the list of voters para may ensure that you know the, the ballots arrive to the place with the person itself ang problema din po kasi ma'am yung ibang mga OFWs palipat-lipat sila ng tirahan because they don't own the homes naman kasi they, they just rent their homes abroad minsan uh, palipat-lipat uh, after a few months hindi pa na naman ng ibang ng ibang ano ibang tirahan so karamihan nagre-return to sender po nagre-return sa sa post sa embassy yung mga kanilang uh, balota but then, so, I recall that to... uh, Commissioner Guanson, because of this, was re recommending na kung pwede, online na lang yung registration. At saka may mga recommendation na international registry ang i-maintain na yung mga address medyo maluwag. Lalo na yung sinasabi ni Senator Tolentino, yung mga seamen. Ako naman, pinoproblema ko yung mga repatriated at umaasang ma-deploy muli, baka bago umabot ng Mayo. So, ano yung magandang gawin? Ma'am, yung with respect to the seamen, uh, they can they can vote anywhere po actually. Uh, so, whichever post they are during the election period, they can go there po and, and cast a ballot. So, can ang ginagawa po ng... Can we the same uh, vote anywhere uh, set up with uh, repatriated uh, uh, OFWs? Kasi nga, they're hanging around here, they're registered overseas, they might get deployed overseas again. Uh, hindi ba pwedeng vote anywhere in local and uh, overseas? Yes, ma'am. I actually had a meeting with uh, OFOB just uh, a few days back. And that's one of the... Uh, I can't hear what that is. Sorry. I, sorry. 
the the office of uh for uh overseas uh voting office for overseas voting po within the comlec ma'am that's off of so okay. sila pa yung counterpart namin sa overseas voting sa DFA and we had a meeting with them at yun po yung kanil, isang mechanism na titingnan nila so that uh, repatriated Filipinos can just vote here in the Philippines whenever they are here and in time before they go back to their workplaces so that we could capture them for their, their vote. Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Yes, Senator Tometillo, please. Yung sinabi kanina that they can vote anywhere, parang sa realidad on the ground, napakahirap sa mga seafarers natin. For instance, uh, a seafarer docking in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. <laughs> They cannot vote in Rotterdam. They have to go to The Hague, to the embassy. So yes, they have to travel several hours to reach the the embassy. The same is true with with other uh, places. So it's it's not it's not uh, voting anywhere. It's voting where the embassy or consulate is located, and that uh, unduly burdens the the the, the seafarer. So hindi pa makaisip ng paraan na online na lang sila, kasi Pag, pag na, wala namang wala namang connectivity siguro sa barko pero pagbaba nila sa pagdaong nila baka pwedeng mag-connect na lang doon sa konsulada para doon ipasok yung vote yung boto nila in, in that way you, you you save time as well as uh, you increase the the voting opportunity for the seafarers otherwise walang boboto mahirapang bumoto kasi gagastos pa sila para pumunta sa embassy buti kung bukas yun Buti kung may tao doon. So it's it's really a, an additional hardship on the part of uh, our seafarers traveling to another place far from uh, the place where they docked or temporarily where their, their vessel uh, uh, transited. So hindi totoo eh, vote anywhere. Uh, otherwise, siguro kung makaisip kayo ng, ng mode wherein bilang na bilang naman yung mga ports, eh, Berlin, Frankfurt, uh, Rotterdam, yung malalaki, di ba? So, ba't hindi, ba't hindi yes, lumabas yung, yung uh, embassy personnel para doon na lang sa makipag-coordinate doon sa port authorities, doon na lang bumoto rather than uh, wait for them to visit your embassy. Pwede kaya yan? Yeah. Yes, sir. Actually, sir, that's what the embassies are doing in, in these uh, places where there's a uh... A port, sir. So what? What? That's what we call yeah, agit barrio, a barco. So the people from the embassy consulate go to the place, coordinate with the port authorities, para they could set up a table or could go up to to the to the ship, sir. Yun lang. Ah, uh, yung iba talag. Sorry, Rob. Ah, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Ma'am. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So why don't we do it again in in a more mm -hmm. uh, expansive manner? para para yung mga napapunta makapasyal pa kayo nakaikot kayo ng mga <laughs> ng mga lugar na outside your embassy di ba De definitely <laughs> definitely center yes sir okay uh are are, are you uh, are you still speaking uh Mr. Velasco uh, if 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 I may, po, uh, Senator, with respect, naman dito sa Senate Resolution Seven One Six. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the position of the DFA OVS is simple. In as much as our participation is overseas, any legislation that the Philippines enacts will be implemented by foreign service posts, but only so far as it is in harmony with local health and safety regulations. Uh, our Foreign Service Post will also need to follow the local and health and safety protocols against COVID-19 in the conduct of overseas voting in their jurisdictions. But perhaps po, our input to this meeting is to present to the committee some of the experiences of other countries that have conducted their elections despite the pandemic, as reported by our Foreign Service Post. Some of the common practices po, without enacting separate legislation involve uh, strict implementation of health and safety pro protocols and discussed that kanina. Uh, sabi ng iba, it's the use of face masks, uh, maintaining adequate distance, yeah. equipping post stations with disinfectants, and even sinks po for hand washing. May mga post na gumag may mga contest na gumagana. And just as uh, what Senator uh, Cynthia Villarco said, increasing the number of post stations to avoid large gathering people during election day. Uh, some countries also did that po. Then setting up a website or app where voters can check the queue status or the crowd size at their polling stations. Uh, priority voting or advanced voting at polling stations for those identified in risk groups, namely senior citizens and those who have 
chronic illnesses. And yeah. for some countries, po, postal voting and electronic voting are already allowed. Uh, and uh, there are also countries that... To, sorry, you're, they're allowed yes, in those countries or you're saying we should allow them? They, they, they are allowed already in certain countries. Po. Yes, they're allowed in many countries. You're saying that we should allow Filipinos to do the same. Is that what you're saying? Uh, that's not necessarily, of, but there's a policy. That's the of Commissioner Guanzon. And that's yes, been the crying uh, need for the OFWs to vote. Actually, ma'am, opo, meron po yatang ginagawa ngayon na uh, test, test drive for, for, for electronic uh, voting for overseas voters, pero it's still in the in the planning stage, but so hopefully it could push through. Well, it's all about security, right? Nobody, uh, yes, yes. nobody is uh, confident that uh, we can maintain the safeguards necessary for both mail-in as well as electronic voting. That's the problem, Diva. Yes, yes, Madam Senator. And if I may continue, po. Uh, yeah. continue na lang. Uh, there are countries that also enacted special or and or temporary uh, mandatory legislations to address the question of voting amidst the pandemic. For example, in Portugal, po, uh, the presidential national elections was held on uh, 24th of January 2021, and it was at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, they passed a law which uh, provided the electorate the option to vote earlier than the scheduled uh, January 24 elections. So That's what I'm trying to do, actually. I uh, already... Uh... I already sponsored it on the floor of the Senate that we expand the early voting so that as many as can vote early. Yun nga lang, the problem cited na maraming umaalma, hindi sila makaboto ng lokal. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So for this purpose, for the Portuguese citizens had to register in advance for this option. There's also yes. the option of vote collecting service, which is offered, offered to those who are unable to go to the polling stations particularly the sick and the elderly. So their ballots are collected po at their resident homes and or elder, elderly care homes by the municipal representatives wearing protective equipment and they are accompanied po by police officers. And in Norway, they also had, the, they will have their parliamentary ele elections in September, 2021. So they made some temporary amendments to the Electoral Act and Local Government Act. So voters who are in isolation, meaning those who, have, who are confirmed to be COVID, positive should vote from home they can apply for this mode of voting until 10 a.m on election day and those voters who are quarantined should not right. vote in ordi ordinary polling stations no until today we're not allowed to do so whether mail in or uh, electronic as a result comelec will have its hands full running around uh, quarantine facilities possibly isolation centers and hospitals at ganun din sa mga dating suki nila sa home for the aged yung uh, mga detainees sa uh, BJMP at iba pang mga facilities so yun nga tama yun problema natin and, talaga yes ma'am and then also po, these municipalities can start counting advanced votes the day before the election election date itself and lastly, just uh, the last example I have is the in Chile it passed a law uh, uh, which extended the election day from the two, two days instead of one. So under under said law, the elderly, pregnant women, PWDs, and those with chronic illnesses were allowed to vote during specific time lights ahead of the others during the first day, and the rest of the population on the second day. So. Uh, we will submit for uh, Madam Chair uh, may take some submissions made by our post. Um, yes, those uh, those um, those issues have been uh, raised. They've been uh, submitted. So uh, that's something we should consider, Director Elnas. I know that the Comelec has rulemaking power. Um, how far does it extend, and at which point do we need legislation? Maybe uh, Attorney Rodriguez has finally turned up, or. Uh, is Director Elnas or someone from the Comelec able to uh, help us here? So, sabi mo kanina, hindi naman kailangan ng bagong batas para, para gamitin yung mga multipurpose hall, auditorium, hindi naman talaga kailangan, wala naman nakatakda na kailangan iskwelahan, hindi eh, ba? Yeah, yes, yeah. tama yan ma'am. Uh, for ano ma'am, sa legal aspect ma'am, may I request uh, Attorney Rodriguez? Yes, kasi nag-file ako ng early voting at in fact nasa plenary na uh, sana mabigyan ng uh, konting priority 
Um, ang alam natin kasi yung APP hindi nagwo-work ano kasi ayaw ng mga ayaw ng mga seniors na hiwalay sila tapos wala silang priority magulo rin daw sa APP. So what we're recommending is um, instead of the makeshift uh, EAP, dun na gawin somewhere near the precinct na rin uh, yung uh, dating APP. Uh, any thoughts Director Elnaz? Yes, ma'am. Uh, one is, one is yung ano, uh, yung establishment ng APP. Uh, Wala eh, halos sa, halos sa, isa lang yata sa munisipyo, maswerte na. Sa Pangasinan, yes. laking probinsya, iisa sa buong, uh, sa buong probinsya. Yes, ma'am. Uh, maganda yung ano, yung kung mapostro, we, we just need the law. Kung magkakaroon tayo ng early voting and of course uh, parang template ng local absentee voting lang natin yan. In That's right. In expand lang natin. That will cover uh, senior citizens and of course the persons with disability. Ang dami, uh, dami na nagpapacover yung mga nasa quarantine, sa isolation, pati sa hospital. Tapos nagpapacover na rin yung mga internally displaced persons, yung ating mga bakwit. Kasi andun pa rin sila sa refugee centers. Uh, napakarami na rin ang repatriated OFW na kung saan sa napadpad. So, Senator Villar, please. Uh, bakit hindi na lang tayo para kung ayon nyo ng two days, maglagay na lang ng separate polling place for the ano uh, yung mga senior citizen at saka yung people with comorbidity? Yes, that's... Isang, isang polling place para kung ayon nyo ng two days. O, kasi palagay ko hindi sila papayag na hindi sila boboto sa lokal. Eh syempre bakit uh, hindi sila pa, uh, boboto? Lifelong voters yan. Kung baga sila na nga yung pinaka-invested sa lahat eh. Oo. Uh, so gumawa na lang ng separate polling place para sa kanila. Sa bawat barangay. Oo. Hindi bali magkasanda tayo. Magkagasta tayo. Wala namang problema pag eleksyon. Wala namang problema ang Congress na magbigay ng budget. Eleksyon. <laughs> Di ba? Thank so, you for that, ma'am. Lalo That's naman right. pangit yung mapospone ng eleksyon at magkagulo eleksyon. Mas a bigger cost sa atin yon Di budget right. na lang natin. Di ba? Yeah, dapat paghandaan at saka gastusan yung kailangan. Yung oh. yung kita yung sinasabi ko, yung APP model na nasa batas, hindi talaga nang nagwo-work kasi ayaw talaga ng mga seniors na hiwalay sila. At higit sa lahat yung APP, wala na namang BCM. So wala namang kasiyahan na nagbibilangan. Gusto talaga nila involved din. So perhaps what we can do, we were discussing with Director Elnas, total may priority lay naman during the day of the election. Gawa na lang sila ng another area kung saan may mga assistive aids, may wheelchair ramp, and so on. And uh, that's where they can vote and join the... Uh, uh their families and uh, the rest of the voters uh watching the vcms and so on uh any comment from the comile uh, uh, uh senator i me dapat yata gawin mo na yung budget before tayo mag budget deliberation para makasama sa budget deliberation Masyado pa si Senator Villar sa budget. Hey, Hindi, hey, malapit na tayo eh. Malapit na tayo eh. Sa August na yung budget eh, di ba? Sa August, pagbalik natin. Oo. So gawin na natin ngayong break para sa... Pag, kasi pag-resume natin ng July, ano, July session, hindi ba right, a few weeks after budget na yan? Oo. So makasama sa budget. That's right po. That's what uh, that was what I was going to ask Komelek and everyone else involved if they had additional uh, comments and rec requirements para i-budget na natin. Kasi right now, hindi pala makatotohanan yung gastos doon sa Palawan uh, mm -hmm. na additional 17% lang. Unang-una, uh, -una, maliit nga yung Palawan. Pero ikalawa, sinagot naman ng LGU lahat yung plebiscite. So, hindi rin siya totoo kasi hindi alam ng COMELEC magkano yung ginastos ng LGU. Okay. Thank you very much. So, that's what I will, we will request COMELEC and the rest para maigi naman yung paghanda natin. Talagang budgetan. Yun ang talagang uh, sasabihin ko kung nasan ba tayo sa budget dyan, no? 
Um, Comelec has been very candid and has repeatedly said that they need more budget, you know? uh, and I believe so, because DOH has imposed so many uh, health protocols and limitations. Um, are, are there any other uh, representatives present, both from the government agencies and the stakeholders, whom I've not called upon and have uh, a, uh, a few ideas to add to this discussion? Yes, uh, Committee Secretary, hindi pa nagsasalita. Yung DBM ba at DOF, Ari, to? Kasi nasa usaping budget na tayo. Ma'am, DBM has technical difficulties daw po. Well, that's convenient kasi karagdagan budget. Hindi, joke lang. Iniinis ko lang sila. Uh, anyway. Uh, Dr. Mendoza from Ateneo School of Government, they have, a, I think, a research Oh, thank you very much. Okay, yes, that would be helpful. Uh, Dr. Mendoza, please. If you could share some of your insights from Ateneo, that would be helpful. Madam Chair, uh, Senator Villar, Senator Tolentino, thank you so much for organizing this early discussion to uh, help us all uh, coordinate and prepare for the May 2022 elections. I'm especially... This is actually the second hearing. Uh, we had one in February. Uh, we're very, very nervous about this election. Thank you, <laughs> Professor Mendoza. Thank you, Sen Aimi. Uh, and, and I actually want to congratulate you on running the conversation in a very practical and, and directed way on the challenges. Uh, we have a statement which we just shared with uh, Attorney Dana, so I will spare us from uh, reading that statement. I just want to share a few points in reaction to uh, the discussion as it is going so far. One is we have a study uh, examining the best practices in other countries and what they spent in order to COVID proof. This is the term that is being used right now. COVID proof the plebiscite or elections in other countries. This is a sample of about 100 plebiscites or elections held already under pandemic uh, conditions. And we found a, a comparator uh, estimate which suggested that we may have to spend uh, in the order of about 10 billion pesos uh, in addition to what we are normally spending in order to just conduct uh, safe, uh, free and fair elections. So our comparator was actually the Indonesian election. Um, we, in, in addition to this, we reached out the to... The Indonesian election is very, very uh, arcane and Byzantine. They have uh, voting twice or thrice. Hindi ko nga maintindihan ang gulo eh. <laughs> Indeed, Sen Aimi. And uh, uh, we, we will need to... So this is just a preliminary estimate uh, so that we have an idea of what we're going to need to mobilize. But That's uh, not far from uh, my personal estimate, which is uh, 30% plus. Yes. Uh, and, and in fact, said Aimee, I think the my own uh, opinion on the discussion and the arrangement is we cannot assume that we will just put more resources on the existing system. We need to rethink the design of how we run the election. So I very much agree with Se Senator Villar that we need to think about new polling places, innovations in how we arrange the throughput of the election. The, the people who are voting. And if we do this, uh, we, we will need to uh, then mobilize sufficient inputs from both the public sector and the private sector. So my uh, second input is to share with you and Comelec and our colleagues in government that uh, academia is very happy to support the preparations for our elections. And we are ready to help Comelec uh, uh, calculate the exact amount and the design of the electoral process if they will need our help. And so far, Commissioner Ko has extended a very positive response to us. He joined one of our recent webinars. Uh, oh, and uh, we, will, uh, we are happy to work with them on the budget preparation and your committee uh, to draw on the best practices that we have seen abroad. And you are correct. Uh, we cannot follow the exact uh, steps of another country. We need to domesticate it to our conditions. Uh, and uh, we also want to add that our group, which is called uh, Participate, it's a pro-democracy coalition, 
is ready to enter talks with uh, Comelec to find ways so that we can help in some of the inputs for preparing for the elections. This may include, for instance, the extra space that Senator Villar was pointing out that uh, private, private schools also have extra space. We are also spread out across the country, as you know, and we are happy to... Uh, I'm quite well organized, as a matter of fact. I've uh, met the group many times, and uh, in addition to facilities, you're quite easy to contact and uh, uh, activate. Thank you, Sen Aimi. And, and as you know, we are already helping also for the vaccination campaign. Oh, uh -oh. So uh, as Sen, uh, Se Senator Cynthia mentioned, it's the same setup potentially for the elections. It's open air. Um, there's a lot of um, you know uh, arrangements already in place, and uh, we, we can actually draw on that learning as well. So I uh, just want to end my brief intervention on a show of support for you and for Comelec, uh, and you can count on Participate uh, Coalition to to help out. Yes, thank you very much. I think you have access to a lot of uh, techie students and they'll probably have to help us with the uh, live streaming option that we would like to add in the counting and canvas at every uh, point of the electoral process. Yes, indeed. Ma'am? Yes, uh, who's that? Uh, Hi, Director Elnas again. Dagdag ko lang, ma'am, no? Before we implemented, before we conducted the plebiscite, oh. And before we you know, finalize the rules and, regula and regulations on the PLEB, we consulted, no? we consulted IATF on the process and procedures uh, that we will be implementing for the PLEB. And uh, lahat ng ano, nila nilatag mo na namin before we finalized and bank finalized the rules and procedures. And of course, uh, we made some consultations with the local uh, Health Department, and of course with the DOH and other stakeholders, including the ILG, uh, just to make sure na may implement lahat uh, yung rules and regulations natin, especially on the compliance ng minimum health standards and safety protocols. Sorry, I'm muted. Yes. Thank you very much, Director Elnas. Yes, I see some of my other uh, uh, NGO Suki here, Lente, um, Attorney Helen's here. I think there are a bunch of other people. Shenpeck, Democracy Watch, Namfrel, PPCRV, anyone needs uh, to add something or has the solution to all our problems better yet? Madam Chair? Yes, Good morning. Helen. Yes, may I request to be recognized. So, Yes, uh, coming from coming from the conversations through uh, the Palawan plebiscite has been a very uh, effective testing ground. And actually, we really took the chance and the opportunity to be in it. That's why we deployed uh, at least 150 volunteers to be on the ground to actually observe and check what's happening. So, ma'am, from, from our observation and from our series of consultations with public health experts, I, we would like to highlight um a few of our recommendations and we could give you uh the complete list a uh, complete matrix for these yes, amendments so ma'am yes, for uh, yeah. yes so for the first first uh recommendation we've observed that in palawan there was no um no variations as to the level of quarantine at that time but now we are we are prospectively coming into the nle 2022 uh we would have to have rules that are flexible enough to cater to all the levels of community quarantine because we will be catering to the entire archipelago so the rule should be designed as such and then um Ang also the, uh, kahit MECQ or GCQ yung definition ng bawat LGU na iiba kontra yeah. pa yeah. sa IATF kontra pa mm -hmm. sa LTFRB kontra <laughs> pa sa DOH talagang uh, mahirap Yes, ma'am. I think, uh, yeah, ma'am, uh, that's also an opportunity for all these government agencies to properly coordinate and to already establish that line of coordination. Kasi po, nakita namin during the Palawan plebiscite, marami pong pagdidiskarte, and we commend actually the OEOs, the election officers, to do in doing that. But sometimes po, yung pagdidiskarte could also be a waste of time and magkakaroon po ng confusion sa ating mga department. 
and sa mga government agencies. Plus, ma'am, um, mm-hmm. burden on our teachers. As you said, Alain said, mm-hmm. inaantok na yan. Alas tres ng umaga, mm-hmm. eh, lumuwas na yan. Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mag- nagkakaroon po sila ng confusion. Sino pong kakausapin? Sino pong tatanungin? If they have some questions, both on the electoral process and also on the medical guidelines. Um, Yes po. Tas man, uh, we've also seen na uh, there was a uh, part of the period for the plebiscite was devoted for the elect- uh, for the information campaign and we know na marami po kasing additional na steps like pat- lalo na po yung mga safety protocols. So it's very important to make sure that the information campaign both uh, at least for the NLE app, for for the candidates and for the commission also to make it very inclusive and to uh, as to substance and as to reach kasi po may mga municipalities who will not be uh, uh, reached by the level of infrastructure that we have. Like, for example, ako po, ma'am, I was assigned so, to a municipality. Which was, whole, which was the whole point of the plebiscite, that uh, yes, the uh, province is inaccessible and should thus be divided. Yes, ma'am. Actually, ma'am, I was, uh, I was assigned to a municipality na wala pong radio station. So I was able to witness that they actually do um information campaigns face to face with health protocols and they do yeah uh, yung mga ano po parang announcement po talaga na, na by speakers lang so we really encourage the commission and all um the commission to set up um a structure that would uh utilize po yung mga local radio stations print and even sa tv and then ma'am on another uh, another end nagkaroon din po ng problema sa staffing so, nagkaroon po ng understaffing kasi po meron pong takot, syempre, na sa local transmission. And naging, naging problema rin po ang understaffing kasi hindi po alam kung sino po ang dapat itap. For example po sa medical personnel, uh, hindi po definite pa yung listahan kung sino yung qualified para maging medical personnel. Kaya po ngayon, uh, isa po sa mga recommendation namin na dapat i-expand and i-define yung sino ang maging qualified at sino po doon ang limited Kasi for example, ang mga licensed medical professional professionals, kunyari mga doctors natin, nurses, they can be um they can be assigned to a supervisory capacity kasi limited po sila. Pero marami po tayong um, pwede I, like, I, I just like a quick question mm-hmm. there kasi yun nga yung issue kanina ng pagde-deputize ng uh, volunteers, BHW mm-hmm. Uh, Comelec is the one that uh, registers all of this and accredits them. How will you know? Hindi naman kayo doktor. Uh, tama yun, ma'am. Uh, mm-hmm. We coordinated with the local health officials uh, mm-hmm. from starting from, ano, from the provincial health officer and of course down the line sa mga municipal health officers. So para sila mag- magsasubmit sa inyo? Sila yes, magsasubmit ma'am. sa inyo? Yes, Kasi, ma'am. Kasi um, ang, ang dami-daming mga volunteer kapag ganyan, katulad sa vaccination, we should accept uh, all the volunteers kasi nagkukulang nga, kayo, kap, nga tayo eh. Yes, ma'am. So, ang, ang template namin, ma'am, are those personnel ng uh, local local DOH na, ano, the uh, local yeah. health o- H-O, office natin. H-O, mga H-O, 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 Tsaka yung barangay health workers, ma'am. Yeah, the BHW. In, in the municipality, kulang because of the number of voting centers. Uh, or sobra. Tapos yung ilang yes. credit po, yung isa lang at yung iba hindi. Yes, ma'am. Pinupuno yan ng mga, ano, ng mga barangay health workers who, have the, who has the experience already dun sa ano, uh, pag-impose ng minimum health standards and protocols. Mm-hmm. Actually, okay. yeah. Yeah, actually, ma'am, yes, it's under... Yes, I, I totally agree with you and uh, the professor that, in fact, there's no reason to be understaffed because there are so many volunteers for these mm-hmm. exercises. Mabait ang Pilipino sa ganyan talagang uh, uh, enjoy sa eleksyon, higit sa lahat. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Actually, uh, Chair, kailangan lang din po ng uh, maitirang training uh both on the for the medical personnel and also for the election personnel kasi po napansin din po namin na kailangan na rin ng refresher para po maiwasan ang uh, mga violations mismo ng ating mga election personnel this ma'am uh moving Saka naman din yung... dadaing ng Comelec wala silang budget <laughs> lagi at saka <laughs> okay. pagbago ng mga pagbago-bago ng patakaran hindi na nila ma-update yung tauhan nila ng BEI Opo. Yes, ma'am, I think kailangan po talaga mag, mag-focus doon sa training. Kasi po, na, nagsisimula sa training eh. Kapag alam ng tao yung gagawin nila, pag-master na nila every step of the way, 
when it comes to operations, uh, hindi na po nagkakaroon ng delay, uh, hindi rin po nagkakaroon ng abuse. Tapos yun po. So, so next naman, uh, we, the DOH mentioned on um, giving importance on ventilation and having open spaces. So this can be complemented by by our by our recommendation of having an initial audit uh, that will be led by the commission and uh, will be uh, supplemented by the health office officials and even the engineering officials. Because po through the audit, we can already check and have an inventory kung sino or anong mga lugar yung papasok do sa qualifications that will make it safe to be a voting center. So that can be one activity that could be led by the commission in coordination with the health and even the engineering officials. And lastly, yeah, I actually think that the vaccination um, template with all its uh, mistakes and delays could actually be uh, useful for us kasi na identify na dun eh. At alin nyo may access sa senior citizen, may rampa, may assistive aids, may kung ano-anong uh, gamitin ng wheelchair at iba pa. Uh, I think uh, that's a big uh, part of it. Gamitin natin yung listahan ng vaccination. Yes, ma'am. Actually, right now, ma'am, the DTI already released a joint memorandum. They have the safety seal certification program. So, pwede pa rin po na maging resource po yun kasi nandun na po yung checklist kung ano that's po fine. yung that would make the venue safer. And then lastly, ma'am, on the accountability part, uh, we would recommend uh, the compliance with health protocols or the non-compliance to these protocols should be considered an election offense. Para rin po um, the personnel, the stakeholders, including the candidates and the voters, would know um the limits and why is it important to um why is it important to follow these protocols? And para rin po ay yung mga violators, they have this level of accountability as early as now um kasi po we're nearing the filing of certificate of candidacy and then papasok na po tayo sa campaign period so we know there will be a lot of activities that would um entail crowd gathering so we need to be uh we need to establish that level of accountability accountability as early as now para po um hindi po maging super spreader event ang mga ang mga activities po natin and hopefully yeah. We definitely don't want an India on our hands. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And hopefully, um, these recommendations will be um enshrined in the in the general instructions, ma'am. And for the stakeholders, we can also um list it down in a in a code of conduct. Para rin po informed lahat. Uh, alam ng lahat ang dapat gawin at sumunod din po. Maraming salamat po, chair. Yes, uh, including the stakeholders, NGOs, and accredited uh, observers, ano. Yeah, that's uh, useful. Okay, thank you very much, Helen, and uh, uh, thank you for always being around. Um, I think we have the DBM, is that correct, uh, Committee? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. ma'am. Magandang umaga po. This is, magandang hapon na po pala. This is James Evangelista from the DBM. Hi. Marami ka ba? Yes. Yun lang ang tanong. <laughs> ma'am, may we just note that the funds po for the 2022 NLEs are already with the COMELEC since we already comprehensively released it to them. So given this discussion po that we had this morning, uh, for the procurement of the necessary materials or machines, they can include it po for the 2022 NEP, since we are just in the process of uh, budget deliberation po. Yes, but you did hear that there's an additional 10 billion. Uh, I hope it's burning a hole in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, ma'am. Given the many fiscal, given the Mandana's ruling pa po, ma'am, I think, this Kaya to... sabay-sabay yun eh. Sabay-sabay <laughs> po, even with the creation po ng mga new nag-renationalize po tayo ng mga health facilities, ma'am, eh, given the COVID pandemic po eh. Tapos, so, tapos may sinasabi pang, uh, may sinasabi pang DOH na CO2 monitor at kung ano-ano pang equipment para mag-disinfect. Patay tayo niyan. Yes, ma'am. But I think pagdating po sa DOH, they have the budget naman po eh. For, uh, they have uh, some uh, remaining budget with them, so... So you're you're recommending that DOH donate to Comelec na lang. Um they can ano po they can work together po for this uh, coming election. Ano po ang dapat mo? Talaga hindi magre-release ng DBM kami pa ng pera. But but po na lang sila. Yes ma'am, yes ma'am. But if there is a justification for we can we can find a source po then we can uh, ano po of course we can release the said amount po. 
Kayo ha, talaga naman. Okay, so <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. BBM. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, who else is here? Is it uh, Nam Nam Frel, Frel, Frel? Frel? Yeah. Okay, who's representing Nam Frel today, please? Mr. Alvia po. Yes, uh, Nam Frel, would you like to add anything po? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, Besides COVID proofing the elections, we have some suggestions that we can briefly discuss uh, if we may. May I call on Mr. J. R. Contreras of our technical and systems team to discuss it further? Because this goes hand in hand with uh, preparing for the elections, but it has to be done now, uh, hand in hand with COVID proofing the elections. Uh, may I call uh, Mr. Is J. R. here? J. R. And the comment. Okay, JR. Okay, thanks, Eric. Thanks, JR. Thank yes, you. please proceed. We we did send the paper to uh, Attorney Dana on our suggestion to enhance the integrity, considering the situation of the COVID pandemic. The standards that we were proposing, there are five standards. Uh, we are hoping that it will improve the the reliability and the transparency of the election. Yeah, I have to memorize. Naging six pa nga yung dinagdag mo, JR, eh. Minememorize okay. ko siya para, kunyari, teki rin ako pag uh, pinagtanggol yung hybrid election sa plenary. Okay. Ang, kung, pina, yung, kung pinadala namin, uh, uh, Madam Chair, will not entail additional budget. Or if if it does, maliit lang po. Ano. So, I'll run through it quickly po. Yung, yung first po, if we can uh, standardize on the election uh, software licensing. So, ito po, walang additional cost. We will just require the, the licensing to be on open source or open source uh, standard. Yan po yung number one. That will entail us uh, more time to review and more people to view the, the source code. Hindi ba nabili na yan? Di ba nabili na sa Smartmatic? That was the second, uh, that was the second contract uh, two, three weeks ago. Opo. Eh, hindi naman kwan yun eh. Proprietary naman siya. Hindi naman siya open source. Opo. If we if we require the, the vendor to go open source po, yung pong process of the source code review will radically change and will allow us to have more eyes and more time to review it. If you look at the past elections po that were done on the automated method, Yes, wala JR, po, you're wala preaching wala to the choir. Nadali na kami niyan. Opo. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, yep. Tignan natin. What are, I'm not sure eh, kasi the terms of the contract of Comelec and Smartmatic are uh, still uh, obscure. Apo, na, yun po yung unang suggestion. Number two po, we would like to propose a standard on the printing of the ballots. Kung napunan nyo po, ang printing ng ballots natin are two standards po, uh, Madam Chair. Yung isang standard, they sort it alphabetically. The other is they sort it... Uh, but randomly, so yung pong national position, except for the except for the party list, are sorted alphabetically. Ang nire-recommend po namin, both on the technical point of view, is sorted randomly, tapos binubunod na lang po. It protects a lot of things po, no? And it's possibly a technical solution sa naging problema po natin in the past election in which we have people forgetting to vote, for example, the vice presidency. Kasi po, kung tatandaan nyo yung numero, hindi nyo nalalaktawan. Nandun po yun sa paper na sinuggest namin. Uh, yung pong third na sinasuggest pa rin po namin is a standard on the printing. Yung printing po natin ngayon is just a printed standard that was developed by the provider. Ang nire-recommend lang po namin, Madam Chair, is to have a secondary printout of a QR code which will complement the printout of the manual. So, meron pong manual na nababasa, tapos merong electronically mababasa, which is the QR code. Again, it's a few lines of code, tapos you can do an independent count, you can do a hybrid uh, count for both the ER and the, and the VVPAT or the voter verified. Yeah, have, you, have you raised these, uh, these uh, suggestions to Comelec? Uh, we sent them the the proposal po, and we presented this also with the comelec uh, 
the have the you have you derived any reply well wala pa po, but we will uh, we will follow up and we will present it to them as well okay yeah, director elnas or comele kung nandiyan pa kayo siguro pag-usapan na natin yan kasi hindi ko sigurado kung papayag yung smartmatic o kaya ng ating mga machines or i-reconfigure ng katakot-takot. So, kinakailangan siguro ngayon pa lang tignan na natin ang kakayahan ng ating mga makina. Kaya po, kaya po maaga namin pinipresent. From the technical point of view, we did the study to add the QR code at the last part of the VVPAT and the ER. It will take only a few lines of code, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, In yes. Six seconds yung change. At sana pala, sanay na rin ang tao sa QR sa wakas dahil nga dito sa contact tracing. Sanay na po tayo. At saka yun po, magiging standard procedure siya. May human readable po at may machine readable. Parang standard accounting procedure po, double entry na siya. So yan okay. po yung nire-recommend namin. Yung pangapat po, ginagawa na po at ng Comelec, na-discuss po earlier, yung tamang paggamit ng digital signature. So tinutulak right. namin yun. And yung last po, yung pong transmission method, it should be transmitted through and through using a single format. Ang nire-recommend po namin, it's a technical uh, format called EML or uh, Election Markup Language. Ngayon po kasi, from the BCM to the, the consolidation, may standards po silang ginagamit. Pero pag binaba na po sa transparency server, it's a, uh, it's a platform. Oh, tama. Oo, nagka-translate pa siya eh. Opo. Uh, so, yung po, kung naalala niyo po, yung last election, we had a seven-hour blackout. It's because of the translation program that, that, that caused that. Okay, so, I don't know. I had I I derived so many excuses na hindi ko na alam kung alin totoo. So yung limang recommendation, Madam Chair, we sent it to Attorney Dana na po. Tapos we we sent also a copy to Comelec and we will do presentations uh yes. if if we may po, we can present it directly within your office para maipaliwanag po namin mas mahaba. Marami pong salamat. Yes, I think it's relatively um clear cut. Uh, except nga, I don't know what are the limits of uh, the Smartmatic uh, contract. We have two new contracts. The second one obviously involves software, so that probably impinges on what you're saying today. Um, and also, I'm not certain how aged those VCMs are and the rest of the equipment and if they can handle some of this. Although, like you said, yung QR, ano ba naman yun? Kukonti lang naman ako dyan. So thank you very much, JR and Eric. And I think last but not least, before I release you uh, for lunch, uh, virtual lunch, ni walang pakain ngayon eh. Uh, yung uh, democracy watch yata, hindi, ka, hindi pa yata nakapagsalita. Uh, That's right. Yes, please. Um, That's nice. I think you po. Uh, okay. Ako pangalangan po from democracy okay. watch. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, I'll, I'll try to make it quick since I know people might be hungry this 1236. But first, I wanted to express appreciation for the committee for their efforts to have these discussions earlier in the process, especially also for Comelec's efforts and, and the DICT also that's here. Um, I, I, I won't labor a lot of the points that um, some of the other partners have, have uh, and resource speakers have raised since I do echo a lot of the things that Dean Ron from Ateneo and Lente and Amfrel have said um, about uh, conducting safe and uh, fair elections in 2022. Uh, and, and as well, we'll be submitting a written statement. If there's one point, though, that I think I wanted to add, um, and it, it builds off of what Namfrel earlier said about the use of, of technology in 2022, in particular, the use of um, these automated machines uh, you know, Democracy Watch has data that shows that, you know, 91% of Filipinos uh, prefer the continued use of, of these machines for, for elections. Uh, there's sure, trust sure. in it and there's, and there's uh, accountability and transparency. Yes, I agree. Yes. Um, but also there's, of course, the, the impact it has and the help it, it gives in terms of social distancing, of course, is a big consideration and the prolonged exposure of people um, to crowds uh, given the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but aside from that, really, the, the last point, really the second and, and last point, as I said, this would be quick, is that I, I also wanted to offer and highlight, you know, civil society uh, groups such as Democracy Watch and, and the role that civil society has in creating platforms to discuss and raise awareness 
for safe elections. And of course, I just wanted to make sure that it offer up uh, Democracy Watch as a as a partner moving forward as we as we all hope for a safe and uh, fair elections in 2022. In thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, you're right. We complain constantly about understaffed elections, understaffed registration, when in fact there's a huge untapped group in civil society, volunteers from everywhere, and students in our schools that would like to participate. I uh, think that we should take cognizance of that and finally acknowledge their pivotal role in all these uh, democratic exercises. Uh, most of all in the elections. So, isang malaking bago yun eh, yung uh, mga SK na nag-graduate na, naging 18 years old na, it's, it's important that we capture them and uh, make sure that uh, they vote. I think PPCRV may hirik pa? Tama and ba? Philippine, yes po, and Philippine Medical Association po. Ah, sige, sige. Okay, PPCRV please. Na yes, una yan. Opo. Uh, first of all, uh, let me... Okay, yes, doctor. Yes, uh, first of all, let me congratulate the Senate Committee on Electoral Reforms uh, together with uh, some of the other members, uh, including all the stakeholders uh, from the government to the various NGOs present to today. Uh, allow me to, uh, know, to mention some of the things that were discussed earlier. First of all, uh, let me assure uh, Madam Senator that PPCRB uh, will be again uh, vol volunteering uh, ourselves, especially in the presence of the PPCRB Voters Assistance Desk. Uh, that's one. Secondly, uh, we will try our best to cover 100% of all the clustered precincts, kahit po dumoble pa yung number ng clustered precincts natin. Uh, for sure, PPCRB are also uh, uh, in consonance with the suggestion of uh, Senate, Senator uh, Villar with regards to increasing the number of clustered precincts. Kung po pwede na talaga na from 1,000 to 800, gawin natin uh, 500. In fact, uh, earlier, we even proposed sana kung mga pwede 400. Uh, maximum per clustered precinct. And then uh, with regards to I don't know if uh, if uh, it's all about the budget, I think. You know, at this point, we're counting upwards of 116,000 clustered precincts na. Yan na yung proposal. Ewan ko kung magagawa. Yes, uh, but, uh, but the 115,000 na proposal ng COMELEC uh, last year, is uh, covering for 700 to 800. So nagulat lang ako for the 1,000 ngayon. No? Oh, nga eh. um, yes, yes. But I remember the 115,000 was for a maximum of 800 uh, uh, voters per clustered precinct. Uh, so that would cover four to five uh, established precincts. But anyway, Lowering it down to uh, a passive, possible uh, 400 to 500, much better yan. Uh, and then also with regards to naman sa APPs or the accessible polling places, uh, ang, ang gawin na lang sana ngayon ng COMELEC through the election officer is that wag na nilang antayin na talagang mag, ano, magsabi yung ating mga senior citizens and PWDs uh, ng kanilang kagustuhan to be uh, included in an APP. Kasi yun yung parang initial requirement. Eh. Yeah, the... Na siyang automatic. They, they had to manifest uh, their desire to use the APP. Pero ang problema kasi, uh, kapag walang manifestation, di naman alam ng uh, COMELEC kung ilan. Ilan ang balota, ilan ang taong i-assign, gano'ng kalaki yung lugar. Kasi wala silang idea kung ilan ang sisipot. Yes, yes. pero Madam Chair, yung sabi ko pong APP, meron po itong mga BCM. Ha? Iba pa po yung EAPP na ini-institute natin uh, on election day. Yes. Halimbawa, nilalagay natin sa library, sa karinderia, Actually, or sa Actually, problem uh, APP, auditorium. Okay. That's right. Yeah, problem ng APP, 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 APP,
uh, sorry Madam Chair, wala pong yes. BCM 'yon. Yan po yung talagang talagang iniipon, nilalagay sa sa folder or envelope. Tapos uh, inaakyat 'yan. In fact, kami pa rin 'yung tumutulong diyan eh. Uh, nagla, naglalagay kami diyan ng mga 1 to 2 volunteers per AAPP. Ngayon yung APP po, meron po ito. So the suggestion BCM. is, Doctor, as uh, mentioned earlier, the suggestion is to fold both into one uh, APP. Yung EAP at saka yung APP, gawin na lang seniors and the uh, vulnerable sector na mas yeah, maayos yung yeah. ikanong makeshift at uh, hanggat maari yung BCM eh, lalagyan. Kasi nga yung APP na iinis yung mga tao walang BCM. Tapos yeah, sabi nila, at least priority daw sila pag uh, EAP or dun sa presinto. Samantalang sa APP, sabay-sabay daw yung seniors, buntis, PWD, labo-labo daw. So sinasabi ko nga, uh, total hindi naman nagagampanan ng LGU at ng uh, COMELEC yung APP. Abay, ipagkaisa na lang natin para isang uh, buong lugar na ilalagay doon na malapit na sa presinto. Yes, opo. And then also with the uh, uh, other suggestion of Senator Villar with regards to the uh, using other other areas for uh, as voting centers, okay na okay rin po kami dyan, lalo na with the uh, with the uh, pandemic situation, uh, mas maganda talaga yung ano yung much open bigger area. And then uh, with regards to madun sa uh, OAB, talagang we really need to improve that. Uh, Uh, with regards to the to the ano to the participation kasi talagang ang laki ng gastos natin and yet napakakonti talaga ng voters turn out. And ngayon with regards sa doon sa sa uh, digital signatures uh, uh, talagang pinag-uusapan namin po talaga ito ng gusto sa Comelec Advisory Council. And talagang uh, let me assure you, uh, in addition to the assurance already from the three offices, na talagang in assured din kami sa CAC, na talagang this will be instituted in the 2022 elections. And then with regards sa madun sa uh, voters receipt that will be transmitted to transparency server, uh, that is ano, that is also very good. Kasi in addition to the transparency, pero uh, let me assure also na even in a COVID situation, we will still conduct the unofficial parallel count na ginagawa namin uh, since 2010 elections. Nung nag-start tayo ng automated, so meron pa rin ho tayo niyan. And uh, the office of uh, Senator Aimee could attest to that kasi... Yes, that's right. Kaya nagpapadala ng representative since 2010 hanggang no, 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 no. <laughs> noong 2019. Opo. So, meron pa rin ako kami niyan. Makulit kami, ako, makulit kami. Yes, kahit, uh, yes, opo, opo. Pero okay lang po yun. Tsaka inaalagaan namin yung mga, ano nyo, yung mga representatives nyo. Pinapakain po namin sila talaga ng maayos. <laughs> Oo, ma they will attest to that. And then with regards to the BARM elect electoral ano, code, I hope and pray na yung ating pong uh, BTA would really ano fast track para sa gayon uh, uh, this will be in time uh, for the elections there including the parliamentary elections but be that as it may we will leave the ano the the wisdom of the congress ko in consultation with the barm uh, uh, ano Uh, people kung what would really be the best no and then lastly uh, let me assure also the the ay mukhang naghang sorry okay ah uh, may last yata yung ayun ilang po ay salamat thank you dr serrano at uh, maraming salamat sa tulong ng PPCRV. We'd like to call on the Philippine Medical Association. Huling hirit na po. Yes po. Uh, we started with health and we're ending with health po. Dapat lamang. Dapat lamang. 
Opo. Uh, yes, and uh, opo. Uh, in behalf of our President, Dr. Atienza, and our Vice President, Dr. Tino, uh, we have in our organization experienced two successful hybrid type of elections already. And uh, we have in the PMA focused on following minimum health standards before and during elections. So now uh, we are only we are also highly recommending the focus of health before and during the 2022 elections. In this light, our members through our component societies are enjoined to promote and cooperate with the DOH and IATF protocols from the lowest tier of their local health and uh, local health units. And we will be, we will always be with you in relevant health information campaigns throughout this period. Um, we will submit specific suggestions following this meeting, Madam Chair, and thank you, Po. Yes, thank you very much. And to all of you, thank you very much uh, for uh, your participation and your valuable input. If uh, there is anything more that uh, you might add or you suddenly have divine inspiration for solutions to all these problems, uh, certainly we will welcome them in the committee and you can text me personally. Maraming salamat at uh, ngayon, Bubunuin natin yung budget, Director Elnas, bubunuin na rin natin ng DBM para magbigay uh, sila ng kaunti. Uh, hindi naglalayo si uh, Profesor sa kanyang 10 billion bad news. Uh, tignan natin kung anong magagawa. Pero tulad nga ng sinabi, hindi nga panahon na magkuripot kahit ilokana ako dahil uh, napakahalaga ng eleksyon sa buhay ng ating uh, demokrasya at republika. With uh, that, uh, I thank you all and uh, we suspend once more this hearing for your Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy lunch na virtual lunch. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.